Hello, and welcome to another episode of Social Workers Rise. It is your host, Catherine here. I am a social worker coach, a therapist, and also a course content creator and professional speaker. I am so glad that you are here today. If this episode is helpful for you, I encourage you to text it to a friend, share it on social media. We are here to spread knowledge and not for the gatekeeping of information. So today we are going to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart in all the bad ways, which is burnout. So I have unfortunately experienced burnout during my career, but I know I'm not alone in this. And unfortunately, it's really common to experience burnout. And that is the whole reason why I actually started this podcast is because I continued to get the messages of, well, you're in social work, so you should just expect to be burnt out. That's just how it is. And I thought, no, this is some BS. This, this, is, this does not need to be what we are settling for. Is this the best that we're doing as a profession? Really? Really? A profession that is helping people take care of themselves and we are just okay with burnout as a standard? No. No. We can do better and we must do better. That is why I'm here because burnout is terrible. It is an awful experience. And we're going to talk about what that looks like and how that shows up for you and what you need to know to be prepared. Because in grad school, I had a great grad school experience. However, this topic was not something that they went into detail about. It was more of this ominous warning that we got about, well, don't get burnt out. You don't want to be one of those burnt out social workers. Like, oh, okay. But I love my job and the clients that I serve. So I don't think that's going to be me. So I don't really need to, to worry about that because I just love this work so much. But they never really went into detail about what does this look like? How does this show up? How does this happen? How do we get out of it? What do we do? Right? So that is why I'm here today. And I'm so glad that you're here with me. If you like this episode and you feel like your organization or your college would benefit from a presentation on burnout and social work, then definitely, definitely let me know because I am here to serve and to help your organizations not experience the same fate that I had to go through. So I'll start with telling you first about the moment I realized I was burnt out. And the sneaky thing with burnout is that it really creeps up on us because we are in the time of our lives or in a career or job that we are going, going, going. And at first it's great and we're going and eventually we're just trying to keep up with everything that we're doing and trying to keep up with the work and the documentation and the calls and the clients and keeping up with our personal lives, with our self-care and with our family. And with all of the responsibilities that we have to do, we get this tunnel vision of just, I'm just trying to get through the day, right? I'm just trying to not have my whole world fall apart. I'm trying to make ends meet here. I'm trying to really do my best, but it's hard and I don't have time or the energy to be thinking about other, other things. I just have to do what I have to do and get it done because there's a lot more that needs to be done. And this was where I was at during this time in my life. I was working in hospice and I love the work. I love hospice. I love the hospice patients. I love working in the medical field and it didn't even occur to me that this would happen. But I remember the day I was washing the dishes at home. We had just gotten done with dinner. It was a Tuesday evening. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, my house is a wreck. My kid needs to, you know, be take, be given a bath and I have to finish cleaning up this kitchen and I got to catch up on my notes because my notes are behind and 
I have this very important meeting in the morning with the doctor that I have to make sure that I'm prepared for that meeting as well. Additionally, we need to do story time with the kid and I need to also take care of myself and get eight hours of sleep because I want to be on point for the meeting tomorrow. And I just don't know how this is all going to get done. There's just not enough time in the day to do everything that needs to be done. And my husband could see that I had not been myself for a little while. And to be honest, I had been getting in trouble at work. I had been talked to about my personality change, how I'm not as friendly, and I'm very short and blunt, and it's coming off a little rude. And I I brushed it off because I'm thinking, look, I don't have time to be warm and fluffy. I'm just trying to get this job done, right? So I just completely brushed that off, brushed off the feedback, just brushed off like I know I'm behind on my notes and I'm doing my best and, you know, trying to keep up, right? And so my husband, he could see this change in me, this personality change. And he says, you know, why don't you take a break for tonight and watch a movie with me? And I kid you not, I started crying, like ugly crying over the dishes. It was so bad. And in that moment, I realized this is not how you should respond when somebody invites you to watch a movie with them. Like, who am I? I don't even know who this person is anymore. Who cries over an invitation to a movie? This is, there is something wrong. This must be burnout. So that is what happened. And I do not want the same fate for you. I want better for you because we can do better and you can learn from the terrible experiences that I have so that you don't have them or you don't have your, your version of them, right? So first we're going to break it down as far as stress versus burnout, right? Because stress in and of itself is not always a bad thing, right? Stress can motivate us to do better. Stress can uh, really push us outside of our comfort zone to help us grow. So the definition of stress in and of itself is a physical, chemical, or emotional factor that causes bodily or mental tension, and it may be a factor in disease causation. So it's good to have stress for things right? So stress for that homework that needs to get done. Because if there's no stress, it likely won't happen, right? Stress for that test that we need to study for. If there's no stress, we're probably not going to study for it. Stress on our bodies when we are training for a race or doing sports, right? It helps us get better. However, we should not be in stress for a long time. Our bodies are not designed that way. They are designed to experience stress, right? So back in the day when humans were first created, we had stress because we would see danger in the distance and we'd say, oh my gosh, there's a bear. And our stress levels would go up. We're preparing for fight or flight, right? But once that threat leaves, then our body is able to come back down to homeostasis and we are good, right? The stress is there. It helps us be alert. It helps us be on our game. And then it's down again. The problem is that burnout results when we are having chronic or long-term stress that has not been successfully managed. And the official World Health Organization specifies workplace stress However, I would not limit that to workplace because caregivers have, have experienced burnout all the time, right? Caregiver burnout when people are caring for their children and they experience this ongoing stress and they end up burning out or caring for their adult mother or loved one or father, right? This can lead to caregiver burnout as well. Additionally, what I've seen in talking to social workers is most of the time 
it's a combination of a stressful workplace and stressful home environments to where you're never getting a break. You are always go, 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 go. And that is going to, to really cause you to be really high risk for burnout. And, you know, what do I mean when I say burnout, right? Like how does this show up in our lives? And it shows up in physical ways and emotional ways. The physical ways that it shows up are the ones that we're most likely to notice, the ones that we're most likely to go to the doctor for and seek help for. And this can include headaches and migraines. It could even lead to an upset stomach, GI issues, heart problems. This can, excess stress can cause us to eat more or eat less. So we'll have a weight gain, weight loss, right? Stress can impact our menstrual cycle as women, and we can have problems getting pregnant if we even have a sex drive because stress also decreases our sex drive. This also causes us to get sick more often when we have more stress, our immune system is suppressed. So therefore we're catching colds more often. When we do get sick, it could be a lot more severe. And also too, it's, it could affect your sleep, right? So it could make it hard for you to fall asleep or it can make you make it hard for you to stay asleep where maybe you're waking up in the middle of the night because your mind is just racing. It can give you nightmares, anxiety nightmares, right? Uh, on the flip side, it causes emotional stressors as well. It causes emotional impacts as well. The emotional impact that burnout is going to cause is going to include always feeling tired or exhausted all the time. You may feel easily irritated. You may actually experience a mental distance from your job, meaning you're physically there, but your mind is somewhere else. You've kind of checked out. You may also feel really negative or cynical about your job or the work that you do. And this can lead to, to having self-doubt, imposter syndrome. What am I doing here? Is this even making a difference? Am I meant to be a social worker? I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. I don't know if this is working. I don't know if I have the skills needed to be successful because there's just so much work to do and I'm so far behind and I don't know how everyone else does it. Well, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Everyone else doesn't. And it's a problem, right? The the excess workload, it's unrealistic, right? So if you're experiencing this, check in with your workload. Is it realistic to get done in eight hours? Is it realistic to maintain this level of work production 40 hours a week ongoing, right? So really check in with yourself. Is it realistic for you? Additionally, if you're feeling burnt out, you're going to be less efficient and less productive, which then causes more stress because when you do your notes, maybe you mess up on your notes or you forget something or you <clears throat> forget to assess a certain part of the client. Now this is more work because now we have to call the client back and we have to document this and it, it's just, it turns into a whole show, right? And over time, you know, it can lead to increased depression, anxiety, to the point that you are withdrawing from your loved ones, from your friends, from your family, uh, especially on the weekends or in the evenings if you used to enjoy going out. But now you're just so exhausted from work that you just can't. All you want to do is just be in bed, hide under your covers from the world, until Monday morning rolls around. And we're gonna put this on repeat and do it all again. I don't know about you, but I did not go to grad school to feel this way. And this is not the best that we can do. We can do better and we must do better because we're setting examples for our clients we're setting the bar for our life. 
right? Did you go and get your degree to be this miserable? No, no, you did not. And there is a better way to do this. And this is not your fault. I know it may sound like it is because we're talking about a lot of personal effects of burnout, but this system was not designed for your success. This system was not designed for your wellness, nor was it designed for the wellness of our clients, ironically, right? So this happens because of a lot of different factors. There's no one cause of burnout. If there was, I would uh, make a solution to it and make a lot of money, but there's not. It's more complicated than that, right? There's so many different systems that are at play. There's the society system about what society says that we should be doing as humans to stay productive, to stay meaningful, right? About how expensive self-care is, which it's not. Self-care as humans is not expensive. It can be if you want it to be, but at our core, there's ways to naturally reduce our stress levels, which I'm going to talk about next week with effective self-care. And what does that look like for us as humans? So it has a society level, right? There's the workplace level and the mental health industry. Is your workplace a toxic environment? If it is, burnout is, is probably going to happen. I'm sorry to say, but if we are healthy human beings and we keep drinking this toxic water, eventually we'll be okay. You know, we can eat our cucumbers and salad and kind of weigh it out and try to stay healthy. But eventually if 40 hours a week, if we're just drinking that toxic water and we go home and we drink more toxic water, it just puts that stress on our body that eventually is going to be too much and we're going to get burnt out. So there's the systems that, that stress us, right? And if you're wondering if you are working in a toxic workplace, check the link in the bio because I did a short training on this, on toxic workplaces, how to identify it, what to do, how to respond, and even how to ask questions in your interview for your next job to help prevent yourself from getting hired into a toxic workplace. So it's not all on you. There are things that can be done that can help this. And if you are feeling burnt out right now, you do not need to feel guilty. You are not alone. You alone did not cause this. Okay. I will say this again. Burnout is not your fault. It is not your fault. And you do not have to stay here. You have so many skills and so many ways that you can get out of burnout, right? So many ways. One is effective self-care. And again, we're going to talk about that next week, but effective self-care, making it a priority, setting those boundaries for yourself. So if this episode was helpful for you, send it to a friend, text message it over to them and be like, look, you need to listen to this. If you feel like your workplace or your college would benefit from a presentation on burnout to increase the awareness and to help provide solutions to be healthier, because all of these physical and emotional symptoms, they suck, especially when you're experiencing them all at once. Like it's really, really bad. And I don't want that for you because we can do better and we need to do better. We must do better. I'll talk to you next week.